Our next method for solving quadratics is solving with square roots. Again, there's three methods for solving quadratics. It's kind of the second one I look for before I rely on the final option, the quadratic formula. I, these ones are special because you can't do square roots for every single quadratic. Not every time you see an x squared, the only time you can do it, and there's not a single x as well. So there can be an x squared, but there's also like a 3x or a 2x. Something. You can't do the square root method. All right, so like this one you can. This one you can. This one you can't because there's this 3x here. This one you could the way it's written, but if you foil this out, then you couldn't. So with this squared, just applying to this x, there's no single x, then you can do the, um, fact, or the square root method. So this is the main one that you definitely cannot do it in because there's that 3x there. I, but when I'm doing the square root method, the first thing I do, double check to make sure you can actually do the square root method, make sure it's not having that single x that'll mess it up. Are you gonna isolate the thing being square? That means get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. Take the square root to cancel out the squared. Don't forget when you take the square root of the equation, you have to do the plus or minus. And then simplify if it's not the final answer. Right, so here, 2x squared plus 18 equals 0. I see there's an x squared, but there's no x by itself, so I can do the square root method. So I'm going to get this x squared by itself. I'm going to subtract 18 first, then divide by 2. All right, so now I have x squared by itself. So now I can try to get rid of the square, taking the square root of both sides. So on the left-hand side, I'm just going to get x. On the right-hand side, I get plus or minus. Again, I took the square root of both sides. So I have to get this plus or minus the square root of negative 9. And hopefully you know that the square root of negative 9 is 3i. The 9 turns into the 3. The square root of a negative is i. So that's my final answer. All right, here's another example. This one's not as obvious um, that you can do the square root method maybe, but you have this thing being squared and no thing not being squared. So again, I'm going to isolate the thing being squared. So all of this I want to get by itself. Now I get the square root of both sides because the square root and the square cancel out. On the right-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of 25, which is 5. And then I want to get x all by itself, so I have to move this 3 over. I right. could leave it like this, but also I could do 3 plus 5 and 3 minus 5 to get my two answers. All right. Generally, I'd prefer this over that. All right. Two answers is better than leaving that plus or minus. All right. This is how you do the square root method. Again, get the thing being squared all by itself before you do squares. All right. The main problem is people do squares too early or in problems they can't even do squares in. So if you're making sure you don't do those two things, you should be fine. And then the third thing that people forget is that plus or minus. So make sure you're going to get two answers when you're using the square root method.